Linux screen locking has always been, the best way to put this is, a disgusting nightmare full of software that doesn't work, pretends to work, and isn't secure whatsoever. I'm sure we've all seen the case of running a Linux screen locker on a laptop. So when you close a laptop, you expect the screen locker to be enabled, and it does get enabled. But when you open the laptop, for a couple of seconds, you can see your regular desktop, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait, the screen locker should be running, and suddenly it opens. So when we're talking about Xorg, screen lockers fundamentally don't exist. There is no concept of a screen locker inside of Xorg. So this right here is my desktop, and the basic screen locker you'll see is effectively no different from a full screen window, except that it also stops your inputs going out of this window. But if this window doesn't open in time, or this window closes, well, there's nothing you can really do. Then someone can just see your desktop and do literally anything they want. So the way you generally get around this, firstly, is you make sure the screen locker is being opened before the system goes to sleep. This can be done with things like systemd and various other tooling, so that when the system goes out of sleep, the window is already open. Also you have some form of management daemon, whether this is a systemd job, or just some other application running on your system, so that if the screen locker crashes, it can reopen the screen locker before the attacker can do anything potentially of damage. And to their credit, desktop environments like GNOME and KDE do a good enough job to make sure screen lockers function like they should. And I know we all like to meme on Windows and Mac OS, but Windows objectively does a better job with its screen locking. So if the screen locker crashes, it's probably going to blue screen the system, which might sound really bad. Why would you want your system to crash if the screen locker goes down? Well, it's much better for the system to crash than someone to have unauthorized access. But Wayland and WL Roots offer a better path forward. Now GNOME and KDE Wayland both do their own slightly different separate things, but those aren't all going to be addressing today. So in the WL Roots context, there are two separate solutions. The first one being combining the two protocols, WLR Input Inhibitor and WLR Layer Shell, and the second solution being EXT Session Lock. So the more traditional Wayland and WL root solution is layer shell plus input inhibitor. So what input inhibitor does is, as the name might suggest, it inhibits your inputs. At a compositor level, at a display server level, it limits where your key presses are allowed to be sent. And in the context of a screen locker, you don't want any keys being sent anywhere except for the screen locker. You do not want to let the user swap desktops or force close the application or anything else they might want to do that could bypass the screen locker. Now as for layer shell, we've talked about this in various other videos. This is commonly used for doing things like drawing panels, notifications, wallpapers, status bar, and other things like that that you want to draw on the screen, but you don't want to have treated like a regular window. You want to draw something outside of the compositor. One of the main reasons you do this is to avoid window decorations. So you don't want your screen locker to have things like a close button or a minimize button, or you don't want to be able to go and resize it or move it around so it's not covering the entire screen. Those are definitely definitely not wanted on a screen locker. You also want to make sure your screen locker is blocking out all of the screens. So in my case, I'm running three separate monitors. I've got my main horizontal monitor, the one I'm actually capturing right now. I've also got two vertical monitors used for things like Chad and other things like that. These all need to be blocked out. I shouldn't be able to go and like see my desktop on one of them. I might have something sensitive on that screen. This is pretty much as good as the simple X solution. So it still has Fundamental flaws. So what happens if the screen locker crashes? Well, you see the desktop. What happens with the sleep race condition? Well, it doesn't address this either. Plus, there are some other race conditions you can force as well. What happens if you have your screen locker open and then you start hot plugging your screens? So you start taking your like HDMI cable display port and plugging it in and out multiple times. You might think nothing's going to happen, but what usually will happen is the screen locker will have absolutely no idea what's going on and you'll see temporary moments where you're seeing the desktop. So this still was not a good solution, but I want to say up until 
literally this year, in 2022, it was the best option available on Wayland. And this is where the new protocol comes in, EXT Session Lock. While the previous solution was basically hacking two separate protocols together, this new protocol is made entirely around screen locking. So up until now, the concept of locking a screen was done inside of the application itself. You know the screen is locked because you have a screen locker visible on the screen. But if that screen locker goes away, then the screen is no longer locked. Instead, with this protocol, it moves the locking function out of the app into the compositor. So now the screen locker is basically just a GUI for interacting with the compositor. And if the screen locker crashes, because the screen locking is being done in the compositor, the screen stays locked. And both of the racing conditions can be very easily dealt with. Firstly, just make sure the screen locker is being enabled before the computer goes to sleep. And for when it comes to unplugging and plugging in monitors, because this is being done at the compositor level, the compositor isn't just going to suddenly change what it's rendering. If it's in the lock state, it's going to stay in the lock state until you get rid of the locking. However, a screen locking protocol like this does have some dangers. So I can imagine a situation where every time you open up Sway, River, things like that, you have ransomware on your system, it instantly locks your screen, and it's like, hey, Pay me Bitcoin or we'll, I don't know, put your nudes out on the internet or something like that. That's actually entirely possible. So for the developers of these compositors, they are going to be given the option to whitelist certain compositors if they want to go and do so. They have the option to whitelist certain screen lockers if that's something they want to go and do. So if you're building something like GNOME, for example, and you only want the GNOME screen locker to be used... You can go and say, I only want this one to be used, or you can do something like Sway, where literally anything is available, do whatever you want. Assuming the protocol is working exactly like it should, there is now no way to get to your regular desktop. Except for an interesting edge case. So what if the screen locker doesn't crash, but the compositor crashes, so Sway crashes, River crashes, things like that. Well, now you're dropped into the TTY, and you're still logged in. So if you go and rerun Sway, now you're back on the desktop. This is honestly pretty easy to deal with. If you really care about security, do not open your compositor from the TTY. Instead, use some sort of login manager, display manager, whatever you want to call it. Things like Greet D, for example. This is a daemon running in the background. This is going to make sure your login screen can actually be opened. And then you can use something like GTK Greet, QT Greet, and a bunch of other things like that that will actually give you the login screen. So if your compositor crashes, it's going to log you out and drop you onto this screen. And if that somehow goes down as well, firstly, you are really, really unlucky. But secondly you're not going to be logged into the user. So unless the person trying to access your system knows your username and password, there is nothing they can do, at least on the software side. Obviously, they could always just take your hard drive, but if someone has physical access to your hardware, there's always something extra they can do. You may have spotted that the original solution has been deprecated inside of the Wayland documentation, but because this change only happened this year, there is still a lot of screen lockers out there using the old solution, and there's still some compositors out there that don't have the new protocol either. Things like Sway and River, they are supporting the newest things, but some of the less updated things might still be somewhere in between. Do keep in mind that no matter how good the software solution might seem to be, no screen locker is going to be perfect. At the end of the day, it's just there to give you peace of mind and to make sure your random friend isn't loading up meat spin on a computer and doing other random things while you're in the bathroom. If security is absolutely vital to you, do not leave the system unattended. So let me know your thoughts down below. Did you know the screen lockers were a mess? Are you helping to make them better? Or are you just accepting that it's terrible and just hoping that nothing bad happens? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go like the video. If you really like the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, 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 linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I was about to screw up my outro. Gaming channel, Brodo's and Plays. I'm going to go. See you guys later.